Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 677 episodes made, airing on the Mutual Broadcast Network from 1937 to 1954, we bring to you The Shadow. <laughs> Adventures of the Shadow are on the air, brought to you each week by the Blue Coal Dealers of America. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before the Shadow begins today's adventure, I want to ask you a question. What's the best hard coal you've ever burned? Well, if you burn blue coal, I'll bet you can answer that question right off the bat. And if you don't burn blue coal... I sort of feel it's my duty to tell you just what you've been missing. Clean, radiant, invigorating warmth that takes the chill off the house in a jiffy. That's the kind of heat you get from blue coal. And find out for yourself. Order a trial ton from your neighborhood blue coal dealer tomorrow. He'll show you the easy, economical way to heat your home. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's story, Death Rides a Broomstick. <laughs> light, Doctor? Yes, please, Miss Lane. Would you hold the lantern a little higher? That's it. Oh. I'm trying to be as careful as possible, Mr. McCabry. I understand, Doctor. Go right ahead. Mr. Cranston, would you hand me those bandages now, please? Surely. Here you are. Uh, how is he, Doctor? I'm just dressing the wound now, Commissioner. I think we ought to learn just what this is all about. But, Commissioner, he's not in any condition to talk oh, now. I'm all right, Miss Lane. I'll explain everything right from the beginning. Uh. Then it'll all be very clear. Would you mind propping me up a bit, Doctor? Not at all. There you are. Thank you. My family, the McCavery clan, is an old, old family. And like many old families, there are many things in our past that we'd like to forget. Among them is the fact that many years ago, 1741 to be exact, my great-great-grandfather, Thad McCavery, chieftain of the clan McCavery officiated at the execution of a woman condemned to be burned at the stake on a charge of witchcraft. It took place in the courtyard of the old castle, far up in the Scottish Highlands. And as the story goes, everyone in the township... There she is! They're turning the witch to the stake! Witch! Witch! Burn the witch! Burn the witch! Burn the witch! I burn the witch! Be it known to all that this woman, taken in the practice of black magic and known to be a sorceress in league with the powers of darkness and the evil one himself, is this day to be burned at the stake, that her remains may not be buried in hallowed ground, nor may any offer prayers for the peace of her soul. Her judge too and signed with the seal of the chieftain of the clan McCaffrey. Executioner, apply the torch. Great, say your hand. If I am to die for my witchcraft, then is the clan McCavery to feel the power of it. This day I curse you, McCavery, with a dying curse. 
I give you 200 years from this day. And in the second month of the second century from this date, every male who bears the name of McCaffrey shall die a horrible death. By the end of that month, there shall be no man living with the name of the blood of McCaffrey. This I promise. Enough. Apply the torch. The curse. Apply the torch. The curse is on you. <laughs> The curse was nothing more to my Uncle Garth or my brothers Tom and Donald and myself than just an old wives' tale. A forgotten skeleton moldering in the family closet. Hey, but what has all this got to do Let with... Let him continue the story, Commissioner. Please go ahead, Mr. McCavery. Well, as you know, the family prospered through the years. My Uncle Garth, who took care of the finances, was custodian of over $2 million. And none of us paid attention to the fact that 1941 was the 200th year of the curse. But at the beginning of this month, the second month of the second century, things began to happen. Just past midnight, February 1st, on a small merchant vessel some 200 miles off the coast of Labrador. Our mate, snatched from the prime of life, whom we must leave behind us buried in a sea grave, shall hold a place in our hearts forever. May God in his goodness see fit to bring to him at last peace and bring him home to harbor. Amen. 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 Commit the coffin to the sea. Hoist away over the edge. May heaven so receive the soul of Thomas McCavery. <laughs> he was the first. The first to die. This was your brother? Yes, Miss Lane. My younger brother, Tom. Dead at sea. I remember the night that I received word of his passing. Without knowing why, I found myself looking at a calendar. And for the first time in my life, I gave serious thought to the family curse. Later that evening, I paid a hurried visit to my brother Donald's apartment to bring him the fearful news. Oh, Jamie, come in. I was just writing to... Jamie, what's wrong? You're pale as a ghost. Donald, Tom is dead. Tom is dead? Yes, I just received a cable grant. Tom, dead? Why, why no, that's impossible. It's to... true, Donald. But he was in the best of health. What happened? The cable just said, cause of death unknown. Cause of death unknown? Donald, do you... Do you know what month this is? Well, yes, it's February. Why? February is the second month of the second century. Well, what has that got to do with... Oh. Yes, I see what you mean. Now, Jamie, you don't think... I that... do. I believe that the curse of the clan is now at work. Oh, come now, man. In this day and age, no one can believe that a story that's been handed down... Donald, someone fired that shot from outside this window. Look, look, they threw the gun in through the glass. Why in the name of heaven should... Look, it's mine. That's my gun. How in the Jamie. world... Jamie. Did... Jamie. Donald, what's the matter? I've been shot. Donald. Oh. <laughs> Donald! James McCabry. James McCabry. This court finds you guilty in the first degree of the murder of your brother Donald and sentences you to the state penitentiary where you will be imprisoned for life. Say, officer, it's pretty stuffy in here. Would it be asking too much if we went out to the observation platform? You know, just for my last fresh air as a free man. Well, okay, McCaffrey. But no funny stuff. No, no funny stuff. Come along, then. But remember, you and me are going to be closer than Siamese twins till we get to the big house. <laughs> I could hardly forget it with these handcuffs on. Oh, boy, that smells good. Cigarette? Thank you. Tell me something, will you? What's that? 
What come over a young guy like you to bump off your own brother? I didn't kill him. Now, look, Buster, you aren't talking to the judge now. You were found with your gun in your hand. A door locked and you were trying to smash your way out the window. What does that look like, a teapot? I repeat that I didn't kill him, so don't ask me any more questions, please. Okay, okay. Have it your own way. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. It's lovely weather, isn't it? The days are getting longer. I'll have time to put around in my garden before the light's gone. You fond of gardening? No. It's excellent for the health. Yeah, yeah, I know. I specialize in hydrangeas. You, you like them? Yes and no. Oh, it's a beautiful flower. Last season, they didn't do well for me at all at first. I, no? No, I used some of Dr. Webb's silica extract on them, and did you, you know what? No, what? There's a gun in my left-hand pocket that's going to blast a hole right through your midsection any second now. What? Yes, so I'll just bet you're going to be a good boy and unlock those handcuffs, aren't you? I don't get you. Unlock them. Sure. Sure, okay. Say, who are you? They call me the Smiler. Well, well, what's this all about? You'll find out after we're off this train, Jimmy. Now, over the side with you. Well, after getting me off the train, the Smiler took me to my Uncle Garth's home. Oh, but I, I guess, Lamont, that you and Miss Lane know the story from there on. Yes, Jimmy. Margo and I were driving out to your uncle's. Margo was asking me why I had... Lamont, will you tell me why you picked the dead of night to pay a call in the McCabry mansion? Well, Margot, I thought old Garth might need a little cheering up. This trouble between his nephews has hit the old boy pretty hard. Wait, this looks like the turn here. Yes, I remember those big stone gates. Lamont, it, is that the McCabry mansion? That Karloff Castle? <laughs> yes, old Garth lives there all alone. I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? He must have any number of ghosts to keep him company in that weird old place. <laughs> it is a bit spooky looking, isn't it? That's an understatement. Well, here we are. <laughs> yes, here we are. Shall we put our sheets on now? <laughs> now, Margie, you're going to like old Garth. He isn't like his house at all. Well, if he is, I'm going right home. <laughs> Gee, Lamont, it's so dark I can't see a thing. Well, just hold on to my arm. Front door's right over here. Now, are you finding it by the Braille system? Uh-huh. <laughs> Here we are. I don't see any lights on in the house. And Garth's rooms are upstairs at the rear. Oh. Yeah, it's enough to wake the dead, I guess. Lamont, could you possibly use a more cheerful figure of speech? Oh, Old Wellesley, the butler is usually very prompt in answering the door. I don't understand what's keep. Oh, good evening. Is that you, Wellesley? Who? Oh? Is that Mr. McCavery? McCavery? I'm sorry, I can't see you. It's so dark. Who did you wish to see? Mr. Garth McCavery. Sorry, but there's no one here but me. And uh, who are you, may I ask? I'm known to my friends as the Smiler. Well, uh, this is the McCavery Mansion, isn't it? No, no, I'm sorry. I imagine you've lost your way. You've gotten mixed up. Good night. What in the blaze? This is the McCavery Mansion. I've been here dozens of times. But, Lamont, why should that... Oh, wait man... a minute. If this is the place... There'll be a little family graveyard just within a clump of trees near the car. Uh-oh, here we go again. Let's do a little deducting. If we're looking for a graveyard now, I hope we are in the wrong estate. All in all, this has been a fine night. What with... Lamont, you were right. There's the graveyard. Yes, of course. I knew this was the place. Look. That grave in the middle, the one with the big stone, it... It's all dug up. Yes, yeah, so it is. So it is. Margot, I'm afraid we've got a flat tire. What are you talking about? We've got a flat tire, and we're going to ask our rude gentleman friend to let us use his phone. We're going to get into that house at once. Will Lamont and Margot succeed in getting into the house? We'll find out in just a moment. But first, do you know the most popular topic of conversation these days? Well, it's still the weather. But nowadays, people don't just talk about the weather. They do something about it. Yes, sir. Millions have the last laugh on old mad winter by burning blue coal. For they've discovered that blue coal gives them greater heating comfort at less cost. And no wonder. Blue coal is America's finest hard coal. Mined deep down in the ground where only the choicest hard coal is found. Consequently, there's no finer fuel your money can buy. Yes, blue coal distributes steady, longer-lasting healthful heat, and a blue coal automatic heat regulator 
makes it doubly easy to keep your house at the exact temperature you want. Just a flick of the finger and the thermostat is set, and your furnace dampers open and shut automatically. Blue coal and a blue coal heat regulator make the modern combination for a low-cost, convenient heat. So try the easy blue coal way to heat your home. Phone your neighborhood dealer tomorrow. Ask him for a free furnace inspection, and let him help you enjoy better heat at less cost. His name is listed in the Where to Buy It section of your classified telephone directory under the words Blue Coal. And now, back to Death Rides a Broomstick. Oh, yes, I uh, hate to bother you again, old man, but my left rear tire's gone flat. I, I wonder if I could use your telephone. Haven't you got a spare? Uh, No, no, I haven't. You're sure of that? Quite sure. I'll come in. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Marco. All right. The phone is... I know where the phone is. How do you know? I, uh, I'm gifted with a sixth sense. Yes, everyone tells him that he's psychic. Well, he's most fortunate. You say that you're known as the smiler. Is that because you're always so cheerful? I'm afraid your humor is lost on me. I must get back to my work. Lamont, what do you suppose his work is? Something very grisly, no doubt. Uh, Operator, hurry with that call to Commissioner Weston, will you? I'm ready with it now, sir. Oh, put him on. Hello, Cranston. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, What's on your mind? Well, uh, Margot and I are out at the McCavery Mansion. Right, McCavery Mansion. You mean Garth McCavery's place? Yes. Is he there now? No. We just received a note about him here at headquarters. Well, what about? He's just been kidnapped. What? Yes, the note says Garth McCavery is not coming back. The McCavery curse is working again. Signed, the Smiler. Signed what? The Smiler. The Smiler? Why, he's... Sorry, Mr. Cranston. You must have a bad connection. Uh, Yes. Uh, Yes, indeed. And uh, let me compliment you on your marksmanship. Uh, Thank you. Now I'm afraid I must persuade you both to stay here for the evening. What's that? That flat tire that you uh, haven't got will make it quite impossible for you to return to town. <clears throat> yes, uh, very interesting. Uh, tell me, sir, have you ever used your name, the Smiler, as a signature? Yes, at times. A signature to a note that you might have sent the police? My good man, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, I see. And now I'm going to ask you to retire to your rooms, if you please. And where would they be? Right up those stairs, and I advise you not to try to leave. You see, the next time I I won't be aiming at a telephone. Lamont, what do you suppose this smiler has done with Garth McCavery? I don't know. If I did, I... Let me out! Let me out of here! What's that, Lamont? Sounds like we have a fellow prisoner, Margot, somewhere in this wing of the house. Do you think it's old Garth? There's only one way of finding that out, Margot. I'm going to investigate just what goes on around here as the shadow. (laughs) What was that? Who's there? What are you doing here, James McCaffrey? I'm being held here, a prisoner, but who speaks to me? I am a friend. I'm here to help you. How did you get here? I escaped from the train that was taking me to the penitentiary. How? I was helped by the man who later brought me here to my uncle's home. Was this man the smiler? Yes. Yes, he was. Is he the one who locked you in this room? That's right. Why are you being held prisoner? I don't know. Do you know where your uncle is? I believe so. He's been kidnapped by a gang of murderers. How did you learn that? I overheard the smiler speaking on the phone to the men who've taken my uncle away. Did he happen to say where they might have hidden him? Yes. Yes, at least he mentioned the name of the Sailor's Roost. It's a tavern out on the seacoast. Say, wait a minute. Maybe these kidnappers are the same ones that killed my brothers. If I can rescue my uncle, perhaps I can prove my own innocence. Don't worry, Jimmy. If you're innocent, the law is on your side. But how can I get out of here? I think I know a way. Just continue to shout and pound on the wall. The smiler is bound to come in here to silence you. Then I'll take care of the rest. All right, let's try it then. Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Keep it up. Okay. Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Just a minute, young man. I'm going to have to... Ah! Get his gun, Jimmy. That's it. In the next room, Margolene and Lamont Cranston are being held prisoner. Release them and take them with you. They may be able to help you prove your innocence. All right, but to whom do I owe my thanks? Who are you? I 
and the shadow. Well, according to the sign, this is the sailor's roost. I have an idea they aren't going to give us a very hearty welcome. Well, Margo, at least we have never been thrown out of any lower dive than this. You get 100 for that little gem. <laughs> you have the gun, Jimmy? Yes, Lamont. Very handy. All right, then take a deep breath and in we go. Nice-looking welcoming committee. Yes. Chummy-looking group of cutthroats. Where do we go? Straight ahead to that back room. Follow me. All these hoodlums are watching every move we make. I know it. All we can do is... Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Why, we uh, thought we'd have a drink back there. You'll have a drink in here, buddy. There's more room and it's nicer for a lady. Now, what'll it be? Well, uh, uh, something warming. Uh, brandy and Benedictine be all right for you, too? Well, that's swell. Yes, fine. Okay. Anything else on your mind? Else? Yeah. Else. Well, uh, only that we're looking for someone. Who? Mr. Garth McCavery. But I don't suppose you'd know anything about him. I don't. No, I uh, somehow didn't think you would. You'll have to wait a second for your drinks. I've got to get some Benedictine in the back room. Oh, interesting chap. Hmm, isn't he? What's more interesting is that right behind the bar, there are at least six bottles of Benedictine. He uh, wouldn't be notifying someone that we're here, would he? James, I think he would. Well, we're certainly the object of all eyes. Every thug in this place is glaring at us. Say, uh, I was just talking to the boss, and he says there is a Mr. Garth McCavery here after all. Well, what do you know? His room is right up at the top of the stairs there. The boss says that a couple of you can go up to see him. If you wanna. Oh, well, thank you very much. Don't mention it. Lamont, it's a trap. Undoubtedly. Jimmy, mm -hmm. there's a phone out by that door. I want you to call the police while Margot and I go upstairs to your uncle. Right. Come on, Margot. Come on, what are you doing? I'm putting a brand new shiny nickel in the piano. We who are about to die salute you. Who's there? Garth. Garth McCavery. It's Lamont Cranston. Cranston? Oh. How did you get here? Never mind that now. I've come to help you. Oh, thank heaven. What happened? Who brought you here? A man known as the Smiler. Yes, we've encountered that gentleman. A very interesting chap. Come on. Someone's coming up the stairs. Oh, no. Listen. Oh, they're coming after me. They're coming after me. They'll have to get past me first. You'd better get out the window while I... The boat's in, McCaffrey. The boat's in. What's he talking about? Oh, I don't know. I believe I know, Mr. Cranston. Yes, what is it? Put up your hands and I'll tell you. Put up... Mr. McCaffrey... Do as I say, Cranston... I have a gun in my hand. What's this all about? We're here to save you, Mr. McCarthy. That's very touching. But you're the ones who'll need the saving. And what do you mean? I mean you've blundered into something that's none of your business. And you're going to pay for it, both of you. Then you're here of your own free will, Mr. McCarthy. That's right. The boat's in, McCarthy. All right, I'll be right there. That boat has taken me to a tramp steamer that's anchored in the harbor. But what is your purpose? My purpose is in the black valise there in the corner. That bag contains all of the McCavery millions, carefully converted into cash. Oh, I see. What is it you see, Mr. Cranston? I see now that you are the murderer of your own nephews. Excellent deduction. But it's come too late. What's that? It could be the police, brought here by your nephew, James. James? But he's in my house, a prisoner. You're wrong. He's right downstairs in this building. How did he get here? By the simple process of our bringing him with us. Lamont, the police are... Jimmy! Uncle Garth, you're safe. Look out for him, Jimmy. What do you mean? He means I engineered your escape from a term of life imprisonment so I could personally give you a quicker death. Death from this gun. You don't mean that, Uncle Garth. Yes, he does, Jimmy. That's why he had the smiler help you escape from the train so that you, the last to be killed, could never talk even in a prison cell. Oh, no. Lamont, that explains the open grave we saw. It was to be Jimmy's grave. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Now, then perhaps this will convince you. Jimmy, look out! Oh! I think you've done just about enough. Get away from him, unless you want the same thing, both of you. Where are you going? 
After bidding you both a fond farewell, I'm using this window as an exit to my motor launch. The police are covering this building. They'll spot you. I'll chance that. Come back here. You'll never make yes, it. Yes, I will. Come on, they're throwing a searchlight on this window. Yes, so I see McCabry. McCabry! Are you... You're right, Cranston. I thought I was a little too smart. So you see, at least I know now that it was Uncle Garth that was responsible for all the murders, not the McCavery curse. Of course, Jimmy. You know, it's funny. It seemed for a time as if the witch's words were working out, didn't it? Ah, but of course, that's nonsense. I may be the last of the McCaveries, but I'm alive. And the second month of the second century ends tonight. So it really was just an old wives' tale. Is it a bad wound, Doctor? Yes, I'm afraid it punctured the heart. Just a skeleton in the family closet. Is is he dead? Yes, Miss Lane. There was nothing I could do. Well. That's that, I guess. You coming below, Cranston? In just a moment, Commissioner. The poor, poor boy. <laughs> Lamont, what was that? Nothing. Only the wind. And now, before the shadow gives us a thrilling thumbnail dramatization from real life, here's John Barclay, America's home heating expert. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Extra money always comes in handy, doesn't it? Well, you householders can save yourselves extra money just by taking a few simple precautions during this blustery weather. For instance, if your house is on a hill, protect the windows on the north side with storm sash and weather stripping. Another sound idea is a storm door on the outside of your regular front door. This way, you will save yourself money because you'll be burning less fuel. And you'll be adding to the comfort of your home at the same time. But of course, there's more to keeping your home comfortable than just protecting it on the outside. You see, the comfort you enjoy also depends to a large extent upon the fuel you select for your heating plant. That's why I want to put in a good word right here for blue coal. As Ken Roberts tells you, blue coal is America's finest hard coal. And that means it sends up a flow of clean, healthful heat that makes your house a joy to live in. But before I close, I want to remind you again that a John Barkley trained serviceman is qualified and willing to help you solve any heating problem you may have. His services are an exclusive blue coal dealer accommodation. It'll pay you to phone your neighborhood dealer in the morning. Thank you. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. And now, fresh from the records of the Pennsylvania Quarter Sessions Court, we bring you conclusive proof that crime does not pay. The defendant, Robert J. Bolts, a financial counselor, stands accused of defrauding his clients of more than one million dollars. The plea, guilty. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, February 24th. Robert J. Bolts sentenced to from 20 to 40 years in the Eastern Penitentiary. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Blue Coal Dealers of America bring you an adventure in which the shadow risks life and limb in a daring battle against the forces of evil. So be sure to listen, and be sure to phone your friendly Blue Coal Dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with Blue Coal. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.